Greetings, this is Neuroscience Connections and I'm Bill Mobley, Chair of Neuroscience at UCSD. And I'm really pleased to uh, be able to talk with uh, Paul Azen, who's Professor of Neurosciences in our department about the important work he's doing on Alzheimer's disease. And so to begin, uh, Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you trained and how you came to UCSD. Sure, uh, I'm an internist by training, actually a rheumatologist. I started my career in New York. I finished my training at Mount Sinai and at NYU where I studied inflammation in the lab and in the clinic. Uh, and then accidentally shifted into Alzheimer's work. So it just happened that at Mount Sinai, the earliest therapeutic efforts were uh, taking place. That is, the idea that memory disturbance in Alzheimer's disease might actually be amenable to treatment was being tested mainly in two places, Mount Sinai and UCSD mm -hmm. back then mm -hmm. in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ideas was that inflammation might be playing a role and might present a therapeutic opportunity. That is inflammation in the brain contributing to AD. And because I had background in geriatric medicine and the study of inflammation, I was drafted into the Alzheimer's program. So kind of stumbled into it. Glad you were drafted. At the beginning of the therapeutic age of yeah, Alzheimer's yeah. disease, my boss at the time, Ken Davis, who was chair of psychiatry, had partnered up with Leon Thal mm -hmm. at UCSD to develop uh, cholinesterase inhibitors and to look at anti-inflammatory drugs and neurotrophic treatments to bring therapeutic ideas into, into definitive testing. That partnership led to the approval of Tacrin as the first drug for Alzheimer's disease, and it led to the creation of an organization, an academic organization, that would continue the work behind Tacrin and try to bring additional treatments uh, to all of the people suffering from Alzheimer's disease. So I joined that effort in Mount Sinai uh, and moved through Georgetown and ultimately landed here at UCSD two years ago. Well, we're glad you're here. Um, it would be useful to have your perspective on where we stand now in understanding the disease and in treating it. Uh, it's a very exciting time in Alzheimer's disease in the sense that the neurobiology has advanced to present us with realistic targets for therapies. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it was back in the 80s that uh, cholinergic therapies were first uh, investigated and led to treatments that help, and they do help. And uh, we can now uh, offer meaningful benefits to patients and their families, but we have a long way to go. And fortunately, in the last uh, couple of decades, very exciting targets have, have come to the surface. Molecular targets that might lead not just to augmentation of memory, but actually control of the neuropathology of the neurodegenerative cascade in AD. Uh, and some of the treatments that we are testing right now really get at the heart of the matter, get at the accumulation, deposition, and toxicity of amyloid at tau pathology involved mm -hmm. in tangle formation, the delivery of neurotrophins to the brain to, mm -hmm. to support the survival of neurons. So I really think that we're on the cusp of moving from the first therapeutic age, the symptomatic treatment of Alzheimer's disease, to mm -hmm. modifying the disease process itself. And along with clinical developments in early diagnosis, tracking of disease, and studying biomarkers of disease progression, we have the tools to test these ideas. We have mm -hmm. targets. We have interventions that engage those targets. And we have the methodology that allows us to test therapeutics. Uh, so we're now testing things that can really change the landscape and really change one of uh, the major health care problems in the world. Mm -hmm. you know, as you know, the US population is getting older. The world population is getting older. We have uh, five or six million cases of Alzheimer's disease in the U.S. right now. As we are able to identify people at the pre-dementia stage, we're able to identify many more. So mm -hmm. about 10 million people in the U.S. today that are on the path towards dementia. And worldwide, the numbers are just exploding. The projections now are that by 
the year 2050, just on the basis of the aging of the world population, we're going to have over 100 million people mm -hmm. with Alzheimer's disease. So the problem is as big as any problem in medicine today, mm -hmm. and yet all the tools are in place now. So the neurobiology has advanced, the clinical trial methodology has advanced. We actually have very promising treatments in clinical trials. So I feel that uh, this is the most exciting field there is with a huge problem that we are about to tackle in an effective way in an effective way and make uh, a huge difference. It sounds like the way that you get to a place of real hope is by integrating different sources of information. Can you, what do we need to put together? What kinds of people and ideas do we need to put together to solve the problem of Alzheimer's disease? Right, so it's not an easy problem. Mm. Uh, the mechanisms involved are complex. Uh, they're, may be no magic bullet. Mm -hmm. We hope that uh, we will find uh, single therapies that make a big impact, but I think it's likely uh, that in fact we need to tackle uh, more than one aspect of the neurobiology at the same time and, mm -hmm. uh, in order to really bring the disease under control. And, and that will probably mean that we need to have uh, a collaborative effort uh, among people in different fields of basic science, um, people with expertise in cell biology, in gene delivery, in adult neurogenesis, in uh, uh, neuroimmunology, bring expertise in each of these areas together to develop therapeutic strategies. Also add in those with expertise in neuroimaging that will allow us to determine um, dosing schedules, monitor effects of intervention on disease progression, help us identify the optimal time to intervene in the disease. Mm -hmm. So bring in the, the neuroimaging experts and the biochemical biomarker experts mm -hmm. that allow us to monitor pharmacodynamics in early stages of clinical development. It actually is. Uh, an effort that requires uh, a great deal of collaboration. And so, of course, that means being at UCSD and being in La Jolla is the best place in the world to be working on this. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate to have uh, world leaders in uh, stem cell biology, neurogenesis, uh, animal modeling, transgenic animal modeling of Alzheimer's disease, biochemical biomarker studies, uh, neuroimaging, experts in each of these areas, as well as some of the leading biostatisticians and bioinformatics uh, specialists, are all here mm -hmm. at UCSD. So we are in close proximity, and we all work together mm -hmm. to develop these, these large efforts, these large multi-center programs that are at this point, actually testing the therapeutic idea. So this is kind of the epicenter for this uh, kind of activity. You were telling me earlier about a conference you went to this morning. You want to just uh, say a little bit about that conference? It's kind of an example of how it well, all works sure. together. So we, we have all these pieces here together and we all uh, collaborate and we get together to talk not only about uh, interesting uh, molecular biology and neurogenetics, um, but to talk about clinical cases. So, mm -hmm. so this morning, uh, Doug Galasco put together a CPC, a, a, a clinical pathological correlation meeting, and we uh, talked about two fascinating cases of uh, individuals who have genetic mutations in the presenilin-1 gene causing the familial autosomal dominant form of AD with mm -hmm. fascinating neurological presentations. Uh, we talked about their genetics. We talked about uh, actually what was uh, what was going wrong in their brain. So the appearance of the brain tissue at autopsy, the uh, uh, evidence of neurodegeneration, the type of amyloid accumulation, the involvement of other neuronal systems. We had extensive um, array of uh, immunohistochemical studies of the brain to tie together the various aspects of the molecular pathology. and people interested in all of these aspects that I've been mentioning. Mm -hmm. The neuropsychology of AD, the neuroimaging of AD, the neuropathology of AD, animal modeling of AD, clinical trials in AD. All of those people were together at this conference to learn from these specific cases more about 
the neurobiology of AD and how we can intervene. So it's exciting, and it's, it's happening very here. It's very exciting. Yeah. I think that uh, there's no better place. Uh, we have a huge collection of uh, scientists spanning each of these areas that mm -hmm. get along and want to collaborate. Mm -hmm. We have the entire spectrum from the most basic aspects of the neurobiology all the way to clinical care. Mm -hmm. We have the methods of connecting those two ends of the spectrum through the various stages of translational research and the development of new therapeutics. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're all together here. It's the ideal place to be working on one of the biggest problems there is. Yeah, and it certainly is a huge problem. What about this issue of early diagnosis? Where do we, I guess the underlying idea is it would be very important to try to detect the manifestations of this disease before clinical symptoms arise. Uh, that would be an ideal way to time to treat the disorder, both from a kind of preventive perspective as well as a reversal of any existing damage. How are we going to make this diagnosis earlier and better? Right. So. I agree, that's key. Uh, I think that as we move from symptomatic treatments, which we have now, mm -hmm. to disease-modifying treatments, it only makes sense that the biggest impact is going to be if we intervene early in the process. And by the time someone has dementia, by the si time someone has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease right. based on criteria today, they have very extensive pathology, and that's not going to be the optimal time to intervene. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to identify people well before that. And through work that's gone on here, but also huge collaborative programs that have been addressing this issue, uh, we've made huge progress. So ADNI, the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, uh, which is actually uh, managed through uh, our department here, mm -hmm. is a collaboration among academic investigators now worldwide, mm -hmm. industry investigators worldwide, all of the major pharmaceutical companies participate, the major regulatory bodies, uh, the FDA, the EMEA participate, NIH participates, all the foundations interested in AD participate, and we all get together and work on just these questions of how we can monitor disease, make the diagnosis earlier, mm -hmm. and intervene earlier. And what's come out of this ADNI effort, this huge collaboration, is that uh, there are uh, ways of, of determining that amyloid dysregulation has occurred um, that can be uh, assessed years, probably 10 to 15 years before the onset of dementia. Uh, we can do that using amyloid imaging of brain, which is just now reaching the clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do it by assessment of specific amyloid peptides in the CSF. We can identify people at an asymptomatic stage when uh, they, they are definitely on the trajectory towards Alzheimer's dementia, but are years away mm -hmm. from significant impairment. Mm -hmm. And we are just beginning to take some of our interventions and uh, placing them in this population, mm -hmm. in the pre-dementia, mm -hmm. ultimately in the pre-symptomatic population with amyloid dysregulation. Right. So uh, we could not have gotten to this point even with the expertise we have here at UCSD, it, it requires an international, huge collaborative effort, but that's what's happened in the field. Mm -hmm. I certainly wouldn't have believed the extent to which different companies will come together and work on a shared problem, but that's where this field is, and everybody recognizes that we need to all agree on working together to identify people at the earliest possible date a stage of the neurobiology mm -hmm. and develop the methods to study those people and intervene with disease-modifying therapies at the earliest possible stage. It's exciting. We're glad you're here. We're glad that this department is doing a very important uh, job in helping to house and infrastructure what is really a worldwide effort to prevent and treat Alzheimer's disease, and I thank you for being with me. Thank you very much.